Hi, my name is Garmin, and this is my YouTube channel, New Leaf Podcast. In this very special episode of the podcast, I will be taking you to Oslo Strecke Festival, which I went to last weekend, which was the 7th and 8th of September. Um, me and my mom went to this knitting festival. We had loads of fun. We met loads of new people. Uh, we saw a lot of beautiful yarns and uh, we also visited some uh, yarn stores in Oslo and I thought that was uh, fun to show you. So on the first day we went to some yarn stores and then on the Saturday and Sunday we went to the festival and then on Monday morning we visited another yarn store before heading off to the airport. So first you'll be seeing uh, some clips and some photos I took a while in Oslo and then afterwards I'll be back to show you what I bought and to tell you some more about it. Hello, Hello. we're in Oslo! Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> of the day, Gruna, Gruna Lucka.
where you kind of crossed this park which is really nice and now we are at another yarn shop the third yarn shop of the day we are here and what is it called Fabid gun oh look at that hello are you closing ah uh so this yarn shop is closed unfortunately, um, the dog of the owner got sick and she had to go home. But look, oh it's such a shame. I might be able to see some of their yarn at the festival though. So we'll see. And there were already a lot of knitters on the bus so that was a lot of fun and it's only a few meter walk to the museum <laughs> we're so excited
of those clips of Oslo Strike Festival and Oslo City. We sure had a lot of fun. Um, we arrived on Thursday evening, um, and we had actually planned to go through the to the Munch Museum, but. We were just too tired, so we just uh, grabbed some dinner and then um, went back to the hotel. Uh, but on Friday, we had a jam-packed day where we just visited a whole lot of yarn stores. We started off by going to the Mathalle, which are the food halls. And uh, there are a lot of um, food stalls and... Um, yeah, small restaurants. So that was a lot of fun. Afterwards, we went to Pickles, which uh, is a fabulous yarn store, and I've been following them for forever. It's uh, when I first started um, as a knit and crochet blogger. I remember blogging about Pickles. I love their aesthetic. They have uh, like these balloon jackets and with uh, baubles and um, I just love that. And uh, they had some beautiful samples in the store as well, which you will have seen in the recordings. Um, and I got something um, from their store, which is this beautiful uh, single ply merino. And it's on their Driss base, which is 70% merino, 20% 20 mohair, and 10% wool. And it's hand dyed. And I'll be, um, this will be part of a giveaway on my Patreon page, so be sure to check that out. It's New Leaf Designs, uh, no, it's patreon.com slash New Leaf Designs. Um, so you'll be able to enter a giveaway. And then we went to, we first had a bite to eat um, at a lovely Asian restaurant. And then we went to Grüner Locke. Uh, yeah, um, so this is this area. And there were two yarn stores there. One is uh, Grüner Locke Garn and one is Vervit. I'll put the names here below. So first, uh, Grüner Locke Garn. Uh, and my mom bought a wonderful set of stitch markers, uh, which were like little tiny doves. Yeah, beautiful, just hanging stitch markers. Uh, and I got some low photon wool. And these are the labels. And um, I believe this is called a puffin in English. It's called a lune. In, um, in Norwegian and and this one is called rest or rust um, and they are two skeins of low foot in wool which is apparently a very special kind of Norwegian wool and it says from happy sheep can you read that it's a Norwegian for uh, from Happy Sheep. Wool from Happy Sheep. Yeah. Uh, and this is one color that I got, which is the um, red puffin colorway. And this one, uh, I've also, it's, this is not the entire skein. I will uh, show a clip of these skeins in just uh, just a second and this is the rust one and I recorded a little clip to show you what the skeins look like before I started winding them into balls and the very vibrant red one is dyed on white wool and uh, the rusty color colored one is dyed on gray wool and it's both plant dyed with matter root um, I, I, and I just love matter. I, I can't resist uh, matter dyed wool, so I just uh, knew I had to get these. And it uh, turns out that this wool is very special because it is spun uh, in one of the two spinneries that are still active in Norway. Uh, this uh, lady at the Oslo Schrecke Festival was very kind to explain uh, to me that uh, um, at the moment there's kind of this 
this conversation going on about how Norwegian, so domestic spinneries are closing down because they cannot sell their wool uh, but a lot of there are a lot of knitters in Norway and uh, they buy all of their wool from from foreign countries which I guess could be said about any country because um, in the Netherlands I don't know if there are still any spinneries active but I know that a lot of farms cannot sell the, sh the the wool that they get from their sheep because simply no one will buy them so they just burn it or use it as like isolation or insulation I forgot which one of the two <laughs> uh, to put in their walls or like to put it in bedding and uh, which is very sad because uh, wool is really making a comeback yeah, it's uh, sad that uh, domestic spinneries are closing down, but, um, you know, I believe that there will be a time that this will recover, or some of them will recover, uh, because there's uh, a growing um, popularity of locally produced wool. Low photon wool is one of these. So they're Norwegian sheep, Norwegian spun and Norwegian dyed and that is just beautiful. So after uh, Grunelotkegarn we went to Verbit. It's, um, it's written like this. Verbit and it was actually just kind of across the street from Grunelöcke Garden. Actually, uh, a lady was just there to close the shop because um, the the owner, no, um, the the owner's dog was sick and she had to go home, so she couldn't um, she couldn't uh, keep the shop open. But I uh, was very lucky to see them uh, at the festival the next day. And I bought some yarn from them at the stand. This is actually a Rauma garn, a Rauma lamb's wool garn, uh, yarn. <laughs> um, and it's, I'm not quite sure actually, it's 100 grams, is it? <laughs> it's, it's kind of, um, it says 50 slash 100 grams. I actually think this is 50 grams. And so it's Ramagarn, which is a commercial yarn, but they have hand dyed it themselves. And it's, um, I think it was on a gray base. And yeah, I just love these subtle colors. Um, it's 100% Norwegian wool. And uh, I also got some mohair, which was kind of in the same colors. So a beautiful um, mint green, yellow, orange, and kind of some chocolate brown. Uh, and I think they go really well together. Uh, and I just can't get enough of mohair, so... I wanted to have uh, one of these um, and this mohair is by Canard and it's brushed lace uh, and the kid mohair actually uh, comes from South Africa and uh, this colorway was called Safari which is really fun yeah so I bought those but I bought those at the festival so back to Friday. Uh, so after that we went to the Munch Museum um, where we saw The Scream uh, which was hilarious and um, uh, and we actually um, I didn't know that The Scream had been uh, stolen once and it had been lost for a couple of years. So The Scream is a very um, well-known painting by Edvard Munch and uh, together with the Madonna, these two paintings, they had been stolen, I don't know how many years ago. And uh, actually in the exhibition room where you had the Scream and the Madonna, uh, you also had um, the broken 
um, frames from the robbery and uh, it was um, very interesting actually and um, also heartbreaking because the, the paintings had been damaged uh, during uh, the theft and it had taken a long time to restore them somewhat. Um, yeah, but that was just very interesting. Um, yeah, so we went there and then, let me see, and then we made our way, uh, south, more towards the city center, and we were able to visit Strikedilla, uh, which is in this, um, Norwegian shopping center, and afterwards we also visited Stoff and Stiel. They had a lot of fabrics there, a lot of fabrics rolled, uh, and then just hundreds of different fabrics, but they also had uh, a lot of yarn. I don't think we bought anything there, uh, but it was just a very nice store to browse, and um, um, they, they had a lot of stuff. So yeah, but it was more for um, sewing, uh, yeah. And my mom uh, sewed a lot when she was younger, and um, she was getting all new ideas uh, for sewing projects. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, and I think that was the last yarn shop of the, of the day. Uh, it was a, around 5 o'clock by then. We had walked around 12 kilometers that day. <laughs> Uh, just a whole, um, yeah, walk through, uh, through Oslo, which was really fun. And then on the Saturday we went to the Oslo Strike Festival, which of course was amazing. And, um, it was raining a little bit on the first day, but, um, so we spent, uh, a lot of time inside. Um, the, the marketplace was divided between an outside space and an inside space, and inside it was very crowded, um, especially in the room with, uh, Gould's DK and Cross and Woods, there was just a line to get in there. Um, but the museum had a lot of different buildings and you could take a walk and just see a lot of uh, historical buildings. But they also had like this museum um, cafe and uh, shop and they had a knitting lounge as well. So we just uh, sat there for a couple hours uh, just knitting and chatting to people and it was just so so nice um, to just meet a lot of people and we just you know it's just very relaxing so that was fun and on the first day yeah so i i got these or maybe this was on the second day actually well doesn't really matter so i got these and i got this beautiful yarn and i think it's pronounced isaya um which is Danish uh, wool and it's uh, 600 meters per 100 grams. You can see it's very, very thin. Um, and I can just see this as a beautiful lace shawl. Um, so I'm looking forward to using that. Um, it's 100% uh, uh, pure wool and um, just look at this color isn't it amazing also my mother keeps calling this green but for me it's definitely more yellow what do you think <laughs> I I just I tend to keep it safe on the safe side and just call it mustard but uh, yeah so I think it's more yellow but my mom kept calling it green yeah yeah and then I went to Cross and Woods, which is actually a yarn store from uh, Den Haag, from The Hague, in the Netherlands. I've never been to their actual store, so I really have to um, visit. Um, I got some beautiful stitch markers. There were actually a set of four, but I've already given one to my mom. It's a cat and a cup of tea, which is super cute. Are by yeah Anne Katyn Big. 
I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but I think it's uh, Gaelic or Scottish. I've also seen a lot of her stuff in um, Edinburgh and, on, and in Yarndale with these iconic cats. Um, yeah, so I, I just really like them. And I will be including one of these with the uh, skein by Pickles for the Patreon giveaway. So be sure to check that out. Um, and also, my biggest purchase is this lovely bag by Cross and Woods. Uh, and it's a design by the Blue Rabbit House. And it was exclusively for uh, Cross and Woods. It's just so beautiful. Um, I already have the sheep bag. I think I have that. Yes, it's here. So, <laughs> this is the sheep bag I got at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Fest. And then I got her a little boyfriend. <laughs> the ram bag. Or is it Capricorn? I think it's ram. Yeah, so he is called Fraser, I think. Um, and I love that he has a little scarf. And then um, I got this lovely pin as a present from Across in Woods, which uh, features the squirrel design by the same uh, bag maker, uh, Blue Rabbit House. And the squirrel is called Lisa. And she's just so cute. And I think this was the um, the exclusive design for um, Woolen, uh, the um, Dublin Yarn Fest. Um, and I'm not sure if this was the exclusive design for Edinburgh because I thought that this was it. But I got both of them. So, yeah. So happy with it. <laughs> Actually, when, when my boyfriend and I were at Edinburgh Yarn Fest, he kept using this bag. So, I might have to lend him this bag. So, that would be so cute, wouldn't it? Like, if I use this bag and he uses this bag. <laughs> but he hasn't knit that much since we returned from Edinburgh Yarn Fest. So, anyway. Back to Oslo Schreck Festival. Yeah, so I'm very, very happy with all of these purchases. And then on the second day, my mom and I uh, attended a punch needle workshop by Arona from Buku, uh, which was just amazing. Um, we had so much fun. It, it just... Um, we were using this big punch needle so it all ran very quickly and um, she had a lot of great advice um, and uh, my mom and I had attended a uh, punch needle workshop before by Marianne who is Marie Rose on Instagram and also has just published her first um, punch, uh, punch needle book which actually will be arriving today if I'm not mistaken so I'll be able to show it to you guys later but uh, um, we really really uh, love the uh, workshop by Buku and this is what I made so she had different um, uh, designs laid out and we could pick one and then we would we would put the um, the paper design in the back, put it on the window, and then just uh, just trace the lines. And um, my my mom uh, made this uh, beautiful flowers, and there were also some just geometrical like shapes, and some monstera leaves, which I love. And uh, my mom actually got the kit with uh, the book. Um, I already have the Oxford needle and some extra. Mon monk's cloth. So I'll be looking forward to making more of these as well and I just yeah I just lo uh, love it so much. And the yarn that I use is the uh, Alafas Lopi uh, which is actually uh, one of the yarns that Arona recommends uh, and yeah it just um, 
yeah, I was so happy that we were able to attend this workshop and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and also seeing what everybody else was making and um, just there was so much creativity in that room, you could just taste it. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Arona. And I also included some clips, of course, of the uh, workshop. Uh, yeah, that was just a lot of fun. And then, did I get anything more that day? I don't think. No, so that day we took the ferry back. So we had taken the ferry in the morning from the harbor to the museum aisle. It's not really an island, but yeah, you can take the boat there. And uh, so we took the boat back. I had lovely dinner. As always, we were just completely, we were so tired. So we made our way back to the hotel and just um, watched some ne Netflix and uh, we was just knitting. And then on the Monday morning, we went to Chorven, uh, Chorven Gan, which was in, uh, I am going to butcher this, uh, Major Stuen. It was our uh, the city area we, where we stayed. Uh, and we also went to the Vigeland uh, Park with the sculptures. We went back uh, because the yarn shop uh, was open by then. And then I got some beautiful uh, Angora yarn. But actually, it was a French yarn, but I had never seen it before. I think I've seen some magazines by Annie Blatt, but uh, I had never seen their yarn, and it was just... Oh, I just... Uh, we saw some Angora yarn at the festival, but didn't get any, and then I saw this... Um, I saw this Angora yarn at the shop, and I thought, well, I, I'll just have to take some. So it's, um, this is 100% Angora and this is 70% Angora and 30% wool. And I'll be using it in a new design. And as you might know, I've been really into Boha's knitting style, which was the style of my latest sock pattern. Um, Boha's knitting style is where you combine, um, color work with uh, pearl stitches and uh, yeah just really really fun these are the wild strawberry socks and are available in my Ravelry store traditionally they use a mix of wool and angora so I thought I'll just have to use this in a new design uh, I'm thinking a sweater but uh, we'll see uh, so the addition of Angora just gives this hazy, just mist effect to uh, to the knitting and it looks so good. Just um, look up the wild apple sweater and you'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, just uh, really, really beautiful. So uh, my fingers are itching to get started with that. Um, yeah, uh, but we just, we just had such a great time and also it was super fun because we kept uh, running into the crew of uh, Stephen and Penelope. So that's, you know, Stephen West, Lidi Noy, um, Petra from Undercover Otter also went along and two other girls and I'm sorry, but I don't know their names. Um, we were actually on the same flights. Um, to and from Oslo, so that was really fun. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we just had a lovely time knitting and chatting the whole time. And um, yeah, it was a great weekend. And today I luckily have the day off, so um, I can't wait to get some new ideas onto paper and as always my patrons will be the first to know of any uh, design ideas I have some that I can't wait to share with them so if you'd like to know more please visit my patreon page which is patreon.com slash newleafdesigns uh, and if you'd like to follow me on instagram I'm at newleafdesigns.nl over there um, 
Yeah, and I'd love to uh, to see you on my next podcast episode uh, where I'll be showing you some of the new FOs that I have been wearing this weekend uh, and also some other things. All right. I'm gonna leave it at that because I think this is already a very long video. Uh, so I wish you a very crafty couple of weeks until I see you next. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye!